Okay, well, we're with my sister, and we're doing a little art project. Um, I've been waiting to catch this. She does some dirty pour art where you mix all of the paints together, and um, you'll see. It turns out really cool. And we're doing it on this cornhole board. So it's like a beanbag toss. Here's the other one that's already finished. It's half in, half out of the light. I'll get you a better shot of that. But, you know, the old beanbag toss. Ancient game, everybody's done it all over the planet. And uh, yeah, wait till you see this, it turns out really this cool. first part that we're doing here. So you mix up all the colors you want and you thin them by using either water. For water-based paints. Yeah, or alcohol. The appropriate, thinner for the appropriate type of paint. Or... Do you mix um, oil and acrylic together ever? Yeah, you can use vegetable oil and stuff like that, but it can leave grease on the acrylics. And then some people use silicone, like uh, edible silicone. Yep. And then some people use WD-40, but I don't like the chemicals. So today you're mixing with water? I'm mixing with water and alcohol. Okay. Yeah. And that allows it to flow around? and It thins it so it flows around and it also helps you make, the alcohol can help you make cells. Essentially they're these broken up pieces right here. And that's a cell? And that's that's called cell when it sells out, when it's not just kind of looking hippy dippy, when it actually has like breaked out little pieces of kind of bubble looking stuff. This is uh, this is like random chaos forming fractals and patterns, if that makes any sense. So you've given it a palette and it's done its own creating. And that will always lead to the most beautiful stuff. If you thin them too much, they bleed together. They bleed together, and you're trying to make each of them kind of a different viscosity. Well, yeah, and then I think that like it has to do with the pigment too. Has okay. to do with ha what sinks and what doesn't, but I haven't seen what what they used for pigment. Yeah, like what they used for the colored pigment means one will f be more buoyant than the next. Like they have different thicknesses naturally, even before you thin them. Using so this is all using a lot of the oil on and water resistance and stuff of tendencies and, and then the different things that they use to color it. Yeah, that makes sense. So a lot to deal with.
We are. So I'm liking this one a lot. Sometimes I don't like them. Sometimes I do. This is like an aerial shot of a planet right in here. Yeah, so you can see some of the cells. Yeah. I suppose there's not more. No, but I mean this yellow and blue. always get kind of dried out.
and it continues to move while it dries. It does continue yeah. to move because it's going to pull flat on you. Yep. It just does whatever it does now. You have very little control over this. The only way you can have any sort of control is by setting it in the sun to dry it quicker or flame throwing it. Which also opens up cells, but I don't have one on you right now. <clears throat> Yeah, but it's causing some blue breakouts down here. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely it, butterfly wing. Yeah, sometimes it gets rid of colors and then brings it on, does bigger ones, and this does smaller ones. Yeah. 